Well, hello there. This is Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike, and I do bees. Welcome back to another day in my 2020 beekeeping season. We're going all the way from last winter through to this fall right now here in my small operation in southeast Louisiana. And I always tell you guys, this is not a how-to video. This is a how-I-do video. I'm simply making a vlog, guys, of my operation here in the deep south. So what are we doing today? Well, we're really getting close to the end of the season. We are just about in the uh, end of our goldenrod flow. We still have goldenrod flowing, guys. It's um, It's gone quite a bit this year. It's gone pretty long. And it's been very, very uh, fragrant. I told you in another video I like to smell a goldenrod, but I'm telling you this year has been the most or the strongest smell I've ever smelled. But that's a good thing because that's life and that's nectar going in. And uh, I'm happy about that. But we need to do assessments. So we're gonna go through and check and see what all we've got going on in these hives. Make sure they're strong, make sure they have stores, uh, make sure they're queen right. And uh, the stores, why we'll see where they're at and if they're gonna be needing a feeder. Um, also just want to check any general condition. Wanna see if we need to condense any. I also wanna go through them now because uh, we still have a little bit of a flow and I don't wanna have a bunch of robbing because I'm gonna zip through as many as I can. Now, it is a beautiful day. Goodness, it's beautiful. I just actually changed out of a long sleeve t-shirt. It was 48 here in, in Louisiana, and this is the uh, 17th of October. Um, that's great. Now, you guys can laugh. I know you're laughing up north. Haha, <laughs> long sleeve shirt in 48 degree weather. Laugh if you may, but I laugh at you when it's 85 or 30 Celsius for my Canadian friends when you guys say how hot it is. Huh. Come down here when it's 95. You wouldn't do that, would you? No different than I'm gonna go up there when it's zero. <laughs> just kidding, just joshing with you guys. But yeah, it was beautiful. And yeah, I need a long sleeve shirt in 48 degree mornings. Uh, but we're, we're changed out. Got a little dirt rooster action going on here. Uh, gonna go through these hives. And uh, man, the weather probably right now is in the 60s and the sun is shining. It will get hot, it'll get up into the 70s and uh, maybe er, uh, low 80s, but we had that cool front come through in. It'll be in the 80s next week, lows in the 70s, so. But that's still not heat, that's still not summer dread. But yeah, so it's a good time to go through the hives. Gonna try and zip through as many as I can. I think I got about 14 left to go, two next door and, and another dozen over here. And uh, gonna whip through them really quick and, and try and take you through a few of them. And then I'll just uh, maybe time lapse the rest. But that's it, that's all we got to do today. Now I said a little bit about feeding. Um, as far as evaluating these hives for stores and whether we'll need to feed, we have to start feeding probably about a week. We've got about three to four weeks worth of feeding. I can probably get uh, two rounds of feed or two to one on them, maybe three, um, here at the end of October and going into November. It will be cold. Some of the feeders I use, and I'll go through those one of these days when I go uh, when I start the feed process. But uh, some of them you gotta watch in this, in this, not the vacuum ones, I'm not talking about those right now, but you have to watch those too, but the hive tops, you gotta watch the plastic ones because this time of year, it'll cool down at night and get hot in the day here. We have, like, well, like I said, it'll be in the 70s, upper 70s today, yet it was in the 40s this morning. So we have such a temperature swing this time of year, we can generate a lot of condensation. It's not all bad down in the hive at this point in time in the year, but I've actually watched a hive top feeder uh, fill completely up in a matter of two to three weeks with condensation and water and actually overflow um, into the hive through the top vent holes so it, it's a real thing um, the temperature swings so but uh, but feeding wise I still got a few weeks to feed and I uh, got the, the sugar lined up I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing this week and probably in another few days we'll uh, we'll get some feed on them so I'll go through that later. Now there is there is one thing I want to go ahead and, and tell you about how I do my hives and where, how I set them up for winter. Um, I showed you in another video I like the honey up top in my double deeps and brood in the bottom. And, and if it's in the middle between the two boxes that's fine too. Uh, as long as they got a lot of weight. We want honey around the brood nest, uh, sides in the top. Uh, remember honey is more than just stores. It is a, a thermal insulation. It is a, a thermal control for them. Um, so it's good to have honey there or you know as long as it's on the sides and all in the top that's great and that's my doubles I like to winter in doubles um, it's easier to manage down here uh, it's easier to make sure they have feed on their own down here um, 
but I will run some singles through. And the way that works for me is I prefer doubles, um, but I'm obviously going to have singles. And, uh, of course, the doubles, what they'll be next year is they'll all move up. And by January, into January, they'll mostly all be in the top of those doubles. I like to rotate them. Uh, so that by March splitting time we have two full boxes of brood because they'll start laying here in February No, no doubt. We we are warm enough. They'll start unless we have a super cold winter um, And we haven't had that in a few years The uh, doubles will then be the hives I split in mid-March because down here they'll have enough um, Stores going through they'll have enough going on to where by mid-March those hives will be booming without feed most of the time uh, rarely have I had to feed in the spring to get them to be booming by mid-March and if you don't split them by mid-March you're gonna have swarm cells before the end of March uh, down here so those will be the ones I split those are the doubles any singles I got of course those would be the ones that normally have to feed um, now and what those singles will be those will come out of winter provided they're strong and they'll be busting loose by around mid-March and what those will do is when I do my splits on the others I'll add second deeps and build those into deeps when I build those into deeps those will be you know dedicated honey production hives and the splits I do on the doubles while the old queen which uh, most of them should be one year old in those hopefully um, those will be my honey productions and then the splits if they make honey that's great um, because again I don't feed uh, hot and heavy down here to build them up for the flow as long as I've got 15 to, to 20 hives that I can uh, work with and do honey on and all I'm fine actually 15 is more is, is more like the regular number I deal with uh, the, the other 10 to 12 to 15 hives that uh, were splits or just were weak or whatever those will be hives that I just get on through summer and we build them up for the next fall and they'll all be new queens so that's kind of my system that's kind of what I'm doing right now it's going through those uh, and, and making sure that I can figure that away and we'll, uh, we'll see how their health looks that's the plan of action let's get going all right, we're over here on this side of the yard. Those hives, uh, if, if you remember, we already went through all those, either checking a week one, condensing one. We went through two on the last video. Uh, did all, did, we already did those. And we did the ones at the pond. So I'm gonna jump over here to this stand. We're gonna get these done. I'm only gonna take you through a few of them. It's all the same basic stuff. And if I see anything unusual, I'll definitely uh, include y'all on it. But let's go ahead. This is one that's unusual. It's been a very weak hive. It was very weak and it uh, I just let it go. It was one of those I, I had combined it. it. It was one of those that the reason I don't combine certain things. It didn't do as well after the combine and it dwindled and I think it swarmed and then it took a while to requeen. But uh, they were queen right at one point at the summer assessments. They were just weak. So let's see what they've got. We may have to condense them, but let's go in it and see. Oh my goodness. Beetles, beetles everywhere, and it's, here's why I don't use diamond tasty sir. Let me crush what I can first. Now, you can't see them coming out, I don't think, but they are, they poured out of there. I'm gonna oil, there, look, they're still coming out of there. They're coming out from underneath it. Look at them coming out of the ends. It just doesn't kill them. I mean, there's plenty underneath, but it's 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 not killing them in there fast enough. Look, more of them coming out. It's killing them, but look at all the beetles in there on top of the diametaceous earth. You see that? That's not good. So I'm glad I was able to show you that. And not to mention that the diametaceous earth is it's almost solid now from the humidity. So there's nothing dying. Now it did kill a lot. I'm here to tell you, it killed a lot. But I shouldn't have that. Oil will keep on killing until it's just so full. But you can put a hundred plus beetles in an oil trap and they won't they won't do that. Here's what we're gonna do to this. Now, maybe where you don't have a lot of beetles, the diamondaceous earth will work fine. But there are so many this year down here, it's so bad that that's a prime example. It just doesn't keep up killing them fast enough. Oil, they drown, or they can't get out, it's too slick, it's done. Here, they have the opportunity to continue living on. I know it does get on them when they come out, but I don't need them dying later. I want them dying now, now. Let's see, let's see what we got. 
Look at the beetles. See the beetles, guys? They're all full of honey. Full of goldenrod nectar. Some, yeah, full of goldenrod nectar. So that's that's good. I'm going right for the middle. Ugh. Yep. Saw honey. So we got a top box full of honey. Oh man. All right, that side's empty. This should be a brood nest. All right, let's see here. It's a whole frame of bee bread. Brood nest now. Let's see what this hive did. Oh yeah. She's got bees. She looks good. A decent pattern. Not bad for this time of year. Okay. So outside of the beetles in the top, which is one reason they're probably a little edgy, they look good. They got a box on the top, it's good and heavy. Right, so here's what I'm gonna do. Scrape it good and flat. See, can we get a good seal? and let them put the beetles in the oil. They're good on stores, they're good on queen right. I'm actually pleasantly, pleasantly surprised with that hive. All right, so we wanna do a quick taste test. All right, so I got two honeys. Let's see, can you, you see the difference? I got a darker, a little bit lighter. I hope you can see that. And these came from a loyal viewer, Don Bearden. He's been watching my videos the whole time uh, from the beginning. And uh, always always commenting, always supportive. And uh, he wanted to send me some honey. It's cool. That's what's neat about honey is the differences in it. I'm going to taste the two different kinds. These are from two different yards in Alabama. So, mm, man. I did wash my hands. Let's see. Oh, wow. Man, that's good. That's like fruity. I don't know how to describe it. Mm, that deserves a second. Kind of got a fruity flavor to it. Kind of resembles tallow in a way. Let me cleanse the old palate and try the other one. All right, good sip of water. Let's try this dark one. Man, that was good. That's a good honey right there, Don. I'll tell you what, I like that one. But I haven't tried this one yet. Try not to make a mess, because the bees, they get to smell this honey. They're gonna come over here and get them some Alabama honey. I don't know, man, those are LSU bees. This one seems a little thinner. Wow. Now see, that one don't have that fruity flavor. That one actually resembles tallow a lot. That's real mild. Man, that's good too. That's a mild, mild honey right there. But you, it's got a little tanginess to it, but not the fruitiness. Yeah, it's got like a more of a tart. That's amazing. He said it's from two different yards. See, that one seems more fruity. 
Well, Don, I appreciate it. Man, I appreciate you watching. You've been watching the whole time. You and there's a good handful of y'all, too, that have been watching the whole time. Um, but, yeah, I really appreciate it, man. And, uh, man, that honey's good. I'm going to enjoy that. And he gave me a couple bottles. So I got four of them like this. But uh, that'll be going on some peanut butter tonight. That's good, honey. So, Don, I really appreciate it sending it over to me. It's, it's pretty neat to uh, taste different honeys from different areas and, and, the, and the difference in the bees. Man, what an amazing creature God has given us where uh, when they go out and they get this nectar in different plants and you can have such a different taste. Let's do another quick one with y'all. Got quite a few in there. There's some under here. Oops, got a bee. Diamantaceous earth. It's solid. That's no good. But I don't see a lot of beetles, so. Another problem with what I do is uh, that's honey. That's partial honey. When I do them this infrequently, it's hard to get everything out. Goldenrod nectar in there. Ooh, good strong goldenrod. Nice brood nest. Yeah, I like that. Got larvae in there. They're capping this one. Nice larvae. Decent pattern. Back filling with nectar. That's what we want. How heavy is this hive? Well, that's pretty light. I'm gonna have enough on top. Yep. She's gonna need uh, a lot of nectar in there all around the brood nest. The bottom's light, so I wonder if there's anything even in the bottom. Full of nectar. You know, they're, they're filling everything with nectar, so that's what we want. Yeah, full of nectar. Full. So that's what we're looking for, guys. Good, 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 good. So the top is all nectar. So we'll replace this one. this one with oil. Get this oil went in. Alright, this is the bottom box. And this is the bottom box. So they got the brood in the bottom and the honey in the top. Time to lose these pollen traps as well. I'm not going to be bringing much more in. That's about it for that. And we're going to take these pollen traps off. Get them back to normal. I don't know if you can see how yellow that is. So goldenrod, when they draw comb and fill with goldenrod, that's how yellow it looks. In case you haven't ever seen that before. Very yellow.
All right, guys, I need to go haul this super back. It had a little bit of nectar left in it. I've moved it off of that hive. Uh, just goes to show this thing was on for the whole flow, the goldenrod flow, and it had like, I don't know, a, maybe a, a couple half frames with some nectar in it, barely in the bottom. So we just don't, this isn't a flow, not to mention my bees aren't built up enough to really pack. So I'm gonna haul this thing back. And uh, got through all the hives except for the two next door. I'll go do those in a minute. But uh, let me go ahead and wrap this thing up and tell you what we found. So if you're not sure if the flow is winding down, this is usually a good sign. There's very little nectar in there. And that's from a super I put on before the flow. And there was maybe a half a frame like i was saying when i carried it back that's why i got it out of the bee yard but uh, yeah that's an idea that'll usually let you know that'll let you know so Bye. hey guys that's gonna do it for now we are done for the day and unfortunately we're almost done for the season i say unfortunately but it is always good to get to the end of the season because our season's so hot down here but these are the days that rejuvenate you and get you going again. But uh, just got back from over there next door. All looked well over there. Those singles looked wonderful. Great brood patterns. The queens really are still loading the hives with, uh, with brood. I saw some drones in each of the hives. Uh, well, a few of them. And um, still a lot of brood going in. So that's good. That means there's going to be plenty of bees going in. And I was very, very happy with what I found a lot of uh, good hives um, lots of brood configured the way I liked them um, brood in the bottom honey in the top or you know moved up into it some nobody was all the way at the top already and that's good because this you don't want to start out winter with everybody up in the top when you're talking about doubles um, you know singles that's different but doubles you like them further down with honey on top than brood throughout the bottom and in the top and that's what I found um, pleased with the populations, pleased everybody was queen right. Uh, I didn't find any weak hives. Um, the other thing I saw a lot of was where brood was emerging in the top deeps, they were back filled uh, with uh, goldenrod nectar. And that is perfect. That's exactly what we want. You know, they're not going to get honey bound right now. They're not going to swarm because they're honey bound. We don't have that kind of a flow. They don't have the workforce to get out there and get it. So. Backfill in the top full of nectar is great because that's going to push them on down and push her down. They're going to mig migrate to the bottom and they're going to hang out down there and they're going to have food for the winter. We don't want double deeps all the way at the top. That means they don't have food. So that's a good thing. So everybody was doing good. I, I was really, really pleased uh, with what I have. So went in, put entrance reducers and everything. I don't reduce them all the way down. Um, maybe I will when it gets colder. I put all the chloroplast slides and all the screen bottoms. Um, Made sure all the ventilation was out for right now and uh, checked and seeing who's going to need feed. And that'll be a whole separate video. Here in Louisiana, we normally have up into November. It's the 17th, I think I told you, of October. So I've got two weeks, three weeks, almost four weeks to feed still. And we're dwindling down off the gold run. All right, guys. Well, look. I'm going to go ahead and let y'all go. I really do appreciate everybody watching. All oh, you guys that have been following the whole time and commenting. Man, what it's been really cool. Um, I really, really appreciate it. And guys, if you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. That is the best way you can support the channel. That allows this video to get out to those people that are searching for bee videos. It pops up on the recommended pages when we get a lot of likes. And if you haven't subscribed, don't forget to subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. And guys, don't forget to share this video with your friends, your family, anybody that just enjoys watching bees. This is Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike, and I do bees. Y'all have a wonderful afternoon. And may the Lord bless you and keep you.